So hello. <laughs> Thank you very kindly. Um, so yes, uh, excuse my English, but I'm from London. Uh, so uh, you know the old London, not the one in Ontario. Um, so yeah, I'm basically traveling the planet and playing this thing these days. It wasn't always like this. I used to be working on a building site. Um, I broke a finger one day, and upon breaking my finger, it didn't work very well. And uh, I went home that evening, and I couldn't play my guitar. And upon not being able to play the guitar, I was like, oh, no, this sucks. <laughs> I've got time off work, even, and I can't play the guitar. <laughs> so internally, I weighed up what's worth more to me, you know, uh, having a guaranteed wage at the end of the week, or being able to play with my passion. Um, so yeah, I, I decided that actually my passion was worth more to me than, um, than a, da a daily wage, you know, constructing houses for other people to live in. And uh, yeah, that was back in, I don't know, a bunch of years ago, we won't do numbers. And uh, yeah, so at that point, I actually started working for a djembe importer, somebody who was going to West Africa, bringing instruments back from Africa to England. We were wholesaling them to schools, especially uh, selling them at festivals. They were softwood, not hardwood as well, so the tree grows very quickly. We were replanting lots of trees there in Ghana, West Africa, where I found these shakers. Uh, but then uh, I, I found this instrument. And upon finding this, I realized that finally, my left hemisphere of my brain and my right hemisphere of the brain could actually work in unison together because it's melody and percussion, melody and rhythm, I should say, together in one instrument. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not an expert in how this works, but you know, when somebody recalls a number, they look at one side, and if somebody's telling a lie or something, they say they look in the other side or whatever. Well, what I found out personally was if I drink coffee, um, I was able to play this better, <laughs> which is great. So, Upon doing a bit of research, yeah, apparently caffeine speeds up the synapse reactions and that sort of stuff. So that was great. So yeah, I got a science lesson from busking on the streets of London, which was quite fun. Um, I made first name basis with quite a few of the, um, you know, Her Majesty's finest uh, officers, who kept on telling me that <clears throat> no begging or busking anywhere in the city of London. So, you know, being from England, we're quite close to the rest of Europe. So I got loads of flights all over the place for like really cheap. Um, I used to backpack all over the place, hitchhike, drive my van, all sorts of stuff all over. And luckily this instrument lends itself quite good to being a, a hat box or somewhere to keep your socks, you know. So I had a backpack, off I go. Anyway, so this instrument was originally uh, invented in Switzerland. Um, it's called a hand pan. Hand pan is the family of instruments that this belongs to now. It is a steel pan, by definition, a pan that's made of steel. And by definition, a pan that I'm playing with my hand, hands. So therefore, hand pan. The origin is <laughs> more descriptive than the artistic, I know. Um, this one in particular is made by a company called Terratones. Terratones are actually based in Georgia. I came across these guys like two years ago. We had a beautiful mutual meeting. Someone puts in touch, and we've been great friends ever since. We're working together with them. I used to play an instrument that was made by the original people in Switzerland. They're called Pan Art. Pan Art ceased to produce these instruments a couple of years ago. So I had to sit in front of people and deliver the information that, hey, I, I, I like it, yeah, I play it, it's fun. And somebody say, well, how'd you get one? I'm like, uh, eBay, or like, you know, maybe you can find a second hand one. Luckily, luckily, I mean, the company don't make them anymore. So when I found Terrapan, it was great. Well, Terratone, sorry. Um, well, when we found each other, I should say. Um, it was great. It was like they gave me my, wing, my wings back. You know, this one here, yeah, I'm going to take this. Um, where am I taking this one to? This one's going to be, I'm taking it to India, and I've got a gentleman in India that I'm going to drop it off to. So it's great. I'm going in two weeks' time to drop this off in India. It's amazing. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Q8. I dropped one off to a kid in Q8. I was in China last year, dropped one off there. So I get to travel with these beautiful vessels and drop them off in different places. You know, the world has been navigated so well. Google Earth works so good. Apart from in my mom's house when I try to, you know, uh, <laughs> it's a bit blurry there, you know. And um, yeah, so it's blessed. I get to travel around and uh, not just talk about this instrument, actually, uh, you know, I get to deliver them to people. On one side, you've got the makers of the instruments, you know, the guys who originally made this instrument. Anyway, so on one side, you've obviously got like um, some people who uh, invented the instrument, made the instrument, and are making, they're inspired themselves to make more. On the other side, you've got people who see it for the first time like yourselves, maybe you want to get one. Now, I'm floating in between these two places, and it's great. So I've got this really fun place to deliver information about this. You know? um, so yeah, I'll go back to the instrument, that's right. Um, so it's made of steel. Um, it has got a big hole in the bottom, and each one of these little uh, dents, nodes, dimples, um, cavities, whatever you want to call them, are different sizes. So on a piano, how you'd have a long string or a short string with different tension, well, these uh, dimples, dents, whatever you want to call them, nodes, are uh, different sizes uh, with different uh, stress factors around them. So if I just go around here quickly, D, A, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, and a high D. So I've got three octaves of D, two octaves of A. So if I go from my lowest D to the next D, I've only got like D, A, C, D. Imagine that in one octave. D, E, F, G, A, B flat, D. So all those are in the next octave. So I'm quite limited in as far as like, the notes I have which means I have to smile or look upset and yeah, try to change the energy that way, you know? <clears throat> and um, 
yeah, it's quite fun with that, really. I'm just going to change the little picture as well, just because I've got a little clicker. Everyone else had them, so it's great. But, yeah, I have more hair back then. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's um, a beautiful thing. Like I say, it was invented in Switzerland, this actual um, model, you could say. Um, and the guys in Switzerland, they invented it in the year 2000. It went out on the internet. Um, I was one of the first people on YouTube to play it. When I first got this instrument, YouTube was like a day old or something. It was like six months old by the time I got this, you know. So I remember going to YouTube and typing in hang drum, uh, hand pan, and I found like four or five videos. And now those guys are my friends. It's great. But now if I type in hand pan, I find hundreds upon hundreds of videos of people transposing all different pieces of music and like really going to town with working, um, you know, uh, uh, teaching and all sorts of stuff. So I had to come to the terms that I'm never going to be the most technical, which is fine. Yeah, but if I can be the most traveled, that's something, you know. Um, so yeah, like four days ago, I was in the Caribbean. A uh, uh, week's time, I'll be in Cyprus, and I get to travel around and do this, and it's blessed, it really is. I put my music on the internet for download by donation a couple of years ago to try and keep the emphasis of being a street performer on the internet. So now YouTube is actually busking for me right now, which is quite good. <laughs> and yeah, the, the website, you know, if you type in, yeah, you can find me through my name, it's okay, you know. And um, yeah, it's a, a fun, fun, fun time. Um, so yeah, the original guys in Switzerland made the original instrument. I got that in 2007. I played it for a bunch of years. I loved it. It was great, but I had to deliver the instrument, uh, de deliver the information all the time. That I'm sorry, I can't let you have it. I've got to take it back because I've got to be somewhere else with it. Um, which was great. So I'd leave a CD. That's nice. But I'd really hate, especially when I see the how somebody feels when they play it. You know, for me personally, when I first came across it, I just started tapping. You know, I just sort of. Uh, So I get very distracted, you know. So I used to just sit there in the streets of London and just try to make a soundtracks, you know, for people walking home, just trying to slow down, you know, the pace that people are moving around. I always used to sit near the river, so yeah, I enjoy being around water. You know, it's a nice, nice energy. But what was really fun was when I actually sort of had uh, people stopping in front of me, and I realised, well, wow, okay, this song's good. I'll play it again. And when somebody starts tapping their foot, I'm like, oh, okay, this is really powerful. I'm actually managed to you know, shift what I'm doing and influencing this person to do something. And it was at that point I really started traveling extensively across Europe. I don't speak French, don't speak German, I don't speak any other language other than English. Too fast, I'm told. Sorry, everyone at home who's watching on the live stream from different countries. And um, <laughs> yeah, so with that, I realized the power of music is you don't need to speak the same language as someone to transmit how you're feeling or to, yeah, to move on the energy, basically, you know? And yeah, like, I should really say thank you very kindly to everybody who's listening to this right now, because you're actually turning it into music. All I'm doing is hitting a piece of metal with my thumbs, making a few vibrations that are being picked up by a microphone, going through a lovely sound desk, loads of wires, and out of the speakers. And through the air, that, uh, those vibrations are going into your ears. And that's the bit where the music happens. So thank you very much for turning what I do into music. Without you, like I say, it'd just be a weird guy sitting there playing a couple of barbecue, or a barbecue, or a couple of walks, you know. <laughs> so, like I say, this instrument was actually made in West Virginia for me. Well, I say made; it was finished in West Virginia. Teratones, the company um, who gave me my, my wings back. <laughs> They're actually um, in Georgia, just outside Atlanta. And that's where they sink the metal. They start off with flat pieces of metal that are actually square. So what they do first of all is cut it into a circle, and then they use air hammer, bup, 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 really noisy, to make it into a bowl. And it's at that point they mark out where the nodes are going to be and hand hammer them. And then it, the, the metal is taken from Georgia up to West Virginia, where in West Virginia, um, there's a young gentleman called Ellie Manette. And Ellie Manette was born on the, I think it was the, I'm so really sorry if I get it wrong, Ellie, but um, yeah, he was basically born on the 5th of November, 1929, in Trinidad. So Trinidad, obviously, Trinidadian steel pan. Now, I'm going to run through this very quickly, because there's an hour's worth of documentary. I won't do Ellie you know, enough tribute here by running through it in two minutes. So, so yeah, Ellie, from what I understand, um, at a very young age, 1929, I believe he was born. Um, at a young age, he was subject to a load of the bigger boys playing um, biscuit barrels and uh, silver serving trays and making music. Um, Ellie had an idea about sinking a 55-gallon uh, oil drum. So Ellie is cited as being the first ever chap who actually sunk a 55-gallon oil drum. 
He's also cited to be one of the first gentlemen who, uh, well, he is cited to be the, the first guy who actually put a chromatic scale across two instruments. I believe his inspiration was the fact that someone said to him at some point, that's not real music. So he turned around and went, all right, okay. And he went away and he wanted to prove. So he, um, he decided he wanted to play Mary Had a Little Lamb to his mum. Beautiful, eh? And that's where this instrument was uh, coming from. Ellie in the 1950s went to England, where he was actually part of the first ever steel pan troupe that went to England, um, the Trinidadian Steel Orchestra All Stars, I forget the name, across to England, and he was offered a scholarship um, on her behalf of Her Majesty the Queen, to which he said, thanks, but I'm going back home. Went back to Trinidad, spent a bunch of years there. In the 60s, came to America. Uh, he actually founded some, or helped found some of the uh, first ever steel pan uh, navy bands. And um, yeah, he traveled around extensively, and it's at that point he realized that on a piano, obviously every piano should be tuned to the same relative note. So he went upon it and went to that using a stroboscopic tuner. So that was quite cool, yeah? And that was a guy who, you know, who was like beating up trash cans in his mum's back garden, you know? And uh, anyway, so yeah, he did all these bits of mobs, and he ended up actually in Morgantown in the 80s, where West Virginia University uh, brought him in to do a beautiful project, teaching like hundreds of kids, or well, thousands of kids, how to play and make steel pan setting up hundreds of steel pan bands around the country. Um, <laughs> sorry. Why am I crying? <laughs> but I just want to say thank you to Ellie, because without like, his graft in the early days, he wouldn't have been able to. And he just said his uh, 89th birthday, he's still alive. So tribute to Ellie while he's still here. He can still hear us, you know? And um, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, bless him. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like I say, this is Teratones. These guys who I've been working with for the last couple of years, uh, they give me my wings back. So thank you very beautifully, guys. It's wonderful. This one here, I will say very quickly, just to show you, this one had a little white notes to the keyboard, but instead of having a, a B, it had a B flat. So depending on you know, if you play the guitar or whatever, you know, you'll have a different idea of what scale it is. For me personally, I know when I play a D minor on the guitar, all those notes fit. That's enough for me. Um, this one um, is made by a 21-year-old gentleman named John, who's based in New Jersey. He actually sinks the metal in his mum's garage and tunes it in his mum's basement. Okay, he was innovated. Like, he found out about the original instruments and found out the price of them, couldn't get older one. So he's done pretty well. Yeah, he's, he's even squeezed a few notes uh, on the bottom here. So I'll give you a couple of minutes of that just as an outro. And thank you very kindly, guys, uh, for your time. Um, it doesn't feel natural for me to be say saying this. <laughs> um, blessings. <laughs> Thank you.